Hey guys, welcome to the channel. As you see in the thumbnail what if, Issei keep his juggernaut form forever part 1. Before I start, please do support for more awesome content, and subscribe my channel and like this video. Go support and follow the ex Doug Dimidomex for writing that awesome fanfic and also make sure to comment on this story. Link in the description. Let's start this video. Issei was born a heavy baby. He was born 50 pounds at birth with a normal height for babies. His mother should have died during the pregnancy, but no one could explain why except she was a very strong and willful woman. His weight was very abnormal. As most babies were around 5 to 10 pounds, he was 50 pounds. The doctors tried to find out what was wrong with him, but nothing they did could find out the problem. After about two months of testing, media coverage and such, Issei was finally taken home with his parents. Issei was 10 years old and weighed 250 pounds. He was 5 feet tall, taller than the average teenager. He was currently playing in the nearby park, while his father and mother were watching, while talking with each other and having a romantic moment. He was currently playing in the sandbox, all alone. Why was he alone? Well, when you are different, even parents don't want their kids around someone strange. And a 10-year-old weighing 250 pounds, as heavy as a grown male, maybe even heavier? Yeah, that was strange. He looked like a normal 10-year-old boy, minus the height difference. He just waited a lot. So, the park was empty, but Issei was having fun. He was building a massive sandcastle. Yes, he enjoyed the beach as well and building a massive sandcastle was fun. He would spend hours upon hours at either place, making a sculpture. It was then a figure, wearing a black gothic Lolita outfit appeared. She looked like a girl of 12, maybe 14. She had long black hair down to her and gray eyes. She had pointed tipped ears but with her long hair it was hard to see. It was thanks to the gentle breeze that Issei noticed her hair. He was looking up at her as she stood next to his massive sandcastle, looking down at him. Hello are you looking for someone? I am the only one in this park besides my parents so I think you might have been stood up. I came here for no one but found you instead. Oh you can walk away if you want. Why would I leave? I just got here. The girl said tilting her head. People don't like me. They are afraid of me. Because you are very powerful? Huh? No, because I weigh a lot even though I don't look like I should. Right, you're human so you have no idea what being powerful means. Huh, what are you talking about? Do you want to play with me? Okay. The girl said, dropping into the sand next to him, playing with his sculpture and beginning to sculpt with him. His parents looked over and noticed that Issei had a playmate, and they both turned to each other with a smile. I knew he would find a friend. His father said, I told you didn't I? Many times dear. Issei turned to his new friend and smiled. I'm Issei. Ophis. Ophis? What a strange name but I like it. Do you want to be friends? Friends? What would I get out of that? A uh, someone to talk to and play with? Okay I'll be friends. Issei blinked. Such a strange girl. Issei. It's time to go. It's getting late. His mother called. Oh. Five more minutes? Come on Issei, you can play with your new friend later. It's time for dinner. Issei pouted and turned to Ophis. Wanna meet here tomorrow? Okay, I will be here. Ophis said. Issei smiled and quickly hugged the girl before running off. It was about 9 p.m. and Issei was settling in his bed. He was smiling like a jackass, happy as can be, as he had made a new friend. A strange one, but a friend nonetheless. He was so excited to meet her tomorrow, after his homeschooling, that he could barely get to sleep. Issei and Ophis met up every day for a year. It was however on a June morning, as Issei was with Ophis in the playground, when Issei got sick. What are we going to do today, Ophis? I don't know. Do you want to play in the park again? I enjoyed making sand castles with you. Sure, that's so Issei stopped as he leaned against the alley wall, before coughing up blood. Issei was 11 years old, and his weight increased to 334 pounds yet he didn't look like it. Ophis turned to him, no emotion as usual. She never showed emotion, and just stared at Issei as he hacked up another glob of blood. It's happening quicker than expected. She said, Your body is being devoured by your own power goodbye Issei. Ophis said before disappearing. 
Issei looked up as Ophis was leaving and he fell to his knees, coughing up some more blood before falling face down into the pavement. Don't go. Issei began to lose consciousness, but not before hearing some words from a male. Interesting powers my boy but I know I can help grow them so live for me and let's rule the underworld together. Issei was 16 and he was moving with his parents to Ku. His father got a promotion to regional manager and was moving to Ku to begin his job as the regional manager for the company he worked for. His mother was a housewife and this was just the way it was. They were moving to a nice house, not too big even though they could afford it, but bigger than what they had before. Same amount of bathrooms and bedrooms, but a bigger den, kitchen, dining room and a basement. They finally had a basement. When they arrived in Ku, it was 5 in the morning on Friday the 13th in March. Issei had slept in the car the entire way, and he woke up when the car stopped at their new house. Issei looked around and his mother turned to him. Here we are honey. The town of Ku. It's right next to Tokyo so your father is only in half hour on the bullet train away to his company. Are you okay with leaving Hanshu? I didn't have any friends mom Ophis disappeared when I was younger so I didn't have anyone. All right hun, could I go to school? His father turned to him and laughed. You are definitely not my son if you want to go to school, but you did enjoy the library at school. Sure son, go and make some friends okay? I'll try. Issei said with a small smile before leaving with his backpack. As Issei walked towards the school, his mind began to remember back when he was eleven. Issei had gotten very sick and he nearly died, but he was revived by a devil known as Akatsuki Aosawa, a perverted man with many beautiful ladies as servants. Issei had served as a devil until about four months ago, right around the time as his father got a promotion. No connection of course, just lucky coincidence. Issei was a pawn in the service of Akatsuki but eventually was released as Akatsuki and the rest of the peerage died in a battle with the church. Akatsuki went rogue from the devil clan and began a rampage with his servants, getting the attention of heaven and eventually died fighting exorcists and angels. Akatsuki wasn't exactly super strong, but he held out for hours in an abandoned house. Last stand kinda thing. Issei had easily survived, using his powers to take the hits and eventually run away. Issei had ran away from Akatsuki as he began to lose, which made him a coward but Issei never wanted to be a part of his group anyway. Akatsuki abused him. It made him stronger, but Issei didn't like the man. He was mean. Issei had interesting and unique powers. Issei was gaining weight constantly, due to eating. That is why he was such a heavy baby, because he was absorbing the mass of the food directly into his body, increasing his weight. With each increase in mass, Issei's tissues increased in density and strength. They became stronger and stronger. His strength would increase with each increase in weight as well. This was making him into an unstoppable monster of unimaginable strength. A juggernaut. This was also not the only extent of his powers. When he got any sort of momentum, his body became even stronger and was unstoppable if his weight was heavy enough. He was also able to absorb any type of mass, be it organic like a body or a tree, to inorganic like a car, steel, concrete, a tire, or pretty much anything solid. Food was also something that increased his weight. He was also able to channel the mass into an energy source, and was able to fire it. This did have its drawbacks though, as if he was too heavy well he obviously couldn't do some things. Like you know get on top of a girl or something like that. Luckily, Issei had met up with a friend of his, a fallen angel. This fallen angel never revealed his name, but he had black hair with a blonde tip, and he had a bad boy look to him. The fallen angel gave him a belt that had several tubes. The tubes had a needle tip above each one. There was a total of ten tubes. These tubes allowed Issei to channel the energy of his mass into the tubes, decreasing his weight to normal levels so he could live normally. It also allowed him to regain the weight in case of trouble. Each tube held up to 2,000 pounds each, giving a total of 20,000 pounds of power. It was actually two belts that were strapped around each thigh, with the tubes placed for his fingers. Yes, he would needle his fingers to absorb or put the power away. He had all tubes completely filled with energy. Issei was currently walking to school, thumbing one of the tubes in thought. He thought back to the fallen angel and to Ophis especially Ophis, missing the girl. 
He wondered why she ran off but never dwelled on it for too long. He sighed and looked ahead, finally coming upon the school. He looked up at the large three-story school then looked at the gate, before walking in. It was early, but that was okay. He wanted to go to the library anyway. He wasn't concerned about making friends anymore, as he enjoyed reading. He loved to read many things. Fiction, fantasy, sci-fi, war books and several other things. Issei walked into the yard and opened up the main doors, heading into the school. Unknown to him, he had already caught the attention of a redhead. Rias turned to Sona, who were both standing at the window of the second floor. Sona, who is that boy? Issei Hayadu. Apparently, he is a stray devil and a powerful one at that. I just got a call from Falbium. He told us to be careful and to take him out. He had just killed his master like four months ago, and he was with his family the entire time. They couldn't make a move to take him down because of such. Now that he is here, we have an opportunity. Be careful? Did he say why? He said that Issei has some unique powers, not seen before, and it's quite potent. He might be one of the strongest devils in existence, but Falbium also said he is quite timid and not one to fight much. It's kind of weird that he killed his master then, right? Yes, but if he killed his master, he must be taken down. I agree after school then? My group will be helping as well. All right. After school. Until then, we watch him. Sona nodded and left to begin her schoolwork. Rhea stood still for a moment before leaving the second floor as well, heading to do her own business. Issei looked at the large board for the new students, and he was the only one. He scratched his head and memorized the location for his classes, before heading to his homeroom class, which was on the first floor near the cafeteria. He entered the empty class and took a seat in the far back corner of the room, near one of the windows. He loved window seats. He took out his books and began to set up his desk, ready to learn. Issei was kind of a bookworm and he liked school. He wanted to grow up and get ahead in life, like be a doctor or a fireman, or a policeman. He wasn't sure exactly what he wanted to do, but he wanted to do something important. He also wanted friends, but he was never able to get friends in his life. His only true friend was Ophis, and she ran away when he got sick. He sighed and rubbed his temple thinking back to Ophis. She knew I was getting sick and dying. Who is she? How did she know about my condition? Where is she? These were the questions floating in his head constantly. He sighed again and was woken up by the bell ringing, signaling class was starting soon. He sat up straight and waited to learn. Issei was not originally a bookworm and he didn't like school in the beginning. But it became his place of solace due to his inability to make friends. It was the only way for him to escape the pain of knowing no one wanted to be with him because he was different. Only Ophis wanted him but after she left. He got depressed quickly. He missed his friend because she treated him like a friend, even if she was a strange one. It was then Issei opened his eyes wider, as he felt a presence. Devil. He looked around and while he couldn't pinpoint it, he knew there was a devil in his room, and he bit his lip, a bit worried now that he was going to be targeted since he ran away from his master. He sighed and rubbed his head, not wanting a confrontation. He did enjoy fighting, but he wasn't one to lash out in anger. And he really didn't want to fight because he ran away. It was hard to anger him. He was a timid person but what people didn't know is that he really did enjoy to fight. The school day went by pretty quickly and Issei once again didn't make any friends. Everyone seemed to avoid him, and it made him sad. Issei ate lunch alone though he could have sworn he felt eyes on him oh and he noticed that this school was full of devils, which made him even more worried, so he couldn't focus on his schoolwork. So, as the school emptied, Issei decided to go to the library, which was on the first floor near his homeroom classroom. He went inside and checked out a book on World War II and began to read it while walking out of the library. It was then he felt devils approaching and before he knew it, he felt the familiar feeling of a magic spell. He dropped his book as he began to fall, but as he fell he quickly placed his fingers right up against the tubes strapped to his thighs, before absorbing two tubes, so four thousand pounds. He looked around and noticed there was a multitude of devils. There was a red head with three other devils next to her, and then a black bob cut with seven other devils. For a total of twelve devils, Rias looked over at Sona. I guess you were right, 
he was pretty timid. Do we really go through with this? This is the first time I've seen a stray who wasn't a violent, murdering psychopath. It was then a blonde boy, one who was with the bob cut female, looked at the boy. Sona, I thought you said this was a strong devil? He seemed pretty weak if we took him down so easy. Rias groaned and Sona glared at the boy. Saji! You idiot! What? Saji questioned. Rias sighed. We said he was Tim and not weak W. Don't you people know who I am? Issei started. Issei was in the ground of the school floor, as the magic circle made him phase through it. I'm the juggernaut bitch, Issei roared before moving his arms and throwing the concrete and wood floor all around before jumping out of the crater. When he landed, his feet cracked the floor under him, and the area shook. Saiji looked at him with fear and Issei grinned. Rias and her peerage and Sona and her peerage made a fighting stance, magic circles deploying. My, my, this guy looks like a lot of fun, Rias. Akino said, smiling happily. Rias sighed. We totally could have handled this without fighting. Issei took off his shoes and socks, placing them on the ground before he began to move, running right towards Saji with a grin on his face. If he was going to fight, he was going to have fun, which fighting was fun. Saji was far away, hiding in the back ready to fight. There was Kaneko, Tsubasa in the front, fists at the ready. Issei grinned and Kaneko and Tsubasa raised a fist to punch him, but he just barreled through them like a bowling ball, knocking them over his body and onto the ground. Everyone's eyes turned wide and the bishops of Sona, Akino, Sona all fired their magic powers but Issei burialed right through them, only steam slash smoke coming from his body from the connection of all their powers. He pushed all of them aside into the nearby walls before running right past Rius before tackling Saji into the next room, who was down for the count with just one tackle. Issei turned and smiled, looking at the others before he began to walk back to them, his footsteps shaking the building with each step. He approached and Kaneko and Tsubasa both got in his way, ready to fight. He looked down at Kaneko and grinned. Well, who is this tiny girl? Aren't you a little too young to be a part of high school? Kaneko glared at him and sent a fist right into his crotch, but when she struck, she basically hit something solid. She reeled back with her fist in pain and he just grinned. Oh well, I enjoy itty bitty titties too. Issei grabbed her face with his left hand before twirling around and tossing her across the school, sending through two floors to the third floor, before she went through a room's wall and sent her skidding into the teacher's desk, shattering it. Issei grabbed onto Tsubasa and laughed before tossing her into the pond, Ruruko, knocking them both out as they flew through several walls and ended up in the cafeteria, in the vat of corn. It was then a sword went right into his neck, but it shattered upon impact with his skin. It was the blonde Kiba. Kiba looked shocked before his eyes went wide as Issei grabbed him with both hands before slamming him onto the ground at his feet, making a massive body-sized crater knocking Kiba out with just one body slam. He turned to the pink-haired knight and grinned before picking up Kiba and tossing him right into her, knocking her out. The juggernaut juggernauts whenever he juggernauts, Issei said, flexing his muscles. He turned to Sona, Akino, and Rias and the bishops, but was assaulted by water, thunder, fire, and earth magic, which only put smoke and steam on his body. He smiled and ran right towards them grabbing both bishops by their necks before slamming them into the wall then the ground, knocking them out for the count. Issei then turned to Sona, Akino and Rias. He began to approach them, happy with this fight. As he approached, Rias activated her magic circle. Enough games. Die. You who killed your master deserves only death. Rias said angry. She hates losing her servants. Rias fired her demonic energy, her power of destruction, which connect with Issei as he was running, which sent him flying backwards into several walls, forcing him out of sight. Of course, there was a massive amount of energy, so no one could see him when he flew. Rias sighed and rubbed her head. He was a strong devil, but I guess it's time to tell Falbium the job is complete. It was then Issei had broke through the wall behind them, and he smiled. Here's the juggernaut. All three turned and Issei broke through the wall sending Sona flying when a piece of the wall connected with her head, knocking her out. The juggernaut stops for no man, no monster, no walls and especially for not a big titted beauty like yourself. And what are those? Double D's on both of you? 
Rius's eyes were wide as she formed another demonic circle. Who and what the hell are you? I'm the juggernaut bitch. Issei roared before backhanding Akino, sending her flying unconscious in another room. Rius fired another block of demonic energy, but Issei crossed both arms and made a stance, taking the power of destruction directly. When the smoke, steam and debris cleared, Issei was still right in front of her smiling. His arms were blackened and smoking. That hurt. Issei said before grabbing Rius by her neck before shoving her into the wall nearby, not knocking her out, but getting her to be trapped underneath the rubble. Issei turned to Rius and smiled. Juggernaut smash. Issei put his energy back into the tubes and ran out of the school, but he turned around a minute later or went for his book before walking out of the school reading it. Rius coughed and began to move from under the rubble, but then a magic circle appeared, a red one. Damn I guess I am too late said a voice. It was Serzex, brother? What are you doing here, stopping you from making a mistake and making a fool out of yourself? What? Issei didn't kill his master. His master was a rogue. Falbium didn't know about it as he was too engrossed in his work as usual. I was just told about Issei being spotted here and I wanted to tell you that he wasn't a threat and didn't need to be eliminated but I was also here to save you from being embarrassed. Brother who is this guy? He just calls himself the Juggernaut. That's accurate it wasn't his official name, but it fits him. Issei Hayadu is a powerful devil who has a special ability. He is able to absorb mass and add it to his own weight, increasing his strength and durability with each increase in weight. Didn't you notice how his footsteps cracked the ground and shook the surroundings? Well, he was heavier. He becomes an unstoppable force of nature. If he gets any momentum... This increases his durability and strength tenfold, making him a greater than on the run. However, he is slower than pretty much everyone, but all it takes is one hit and it's over. Rius got out of the rubble and looked around. I thought you said he was timid? He is timid, but did you guys provoke him? Saji called him weak. Well, he is very proud of his strength and I guess he enjoys fighting, but did he seem angry? No, he was enjoying himself and was making jokes. Well, there you have it. Well, I hope you can get the school repaired and we can figure out what to do with the juggernaut when he comes back. Serzek said before leaving in a magic circle. Rhea sighed and went to work gathering her servants from the wreckages. It was the following day, a Friday, and Issei was already heading to school. The day before, he had a run-in with a big titted beauty with gorgeous crimson hair. She was a devil and so were all the others with her. Yes, a devil like himself. They attacked him, due to the fact that he was a stray devil without a master. What they didn't know was that his master got himself killed and Issei just ran from him like a coward, not exactly interested in helping out the bastard. So, they attacked him and he completely crushed them and wasn't even trying hard. He was just having fun. Issei was still reading the book he got from the library the day before, as he walking to school. He felt the eyes of the devils that attacked him the day before but he paid them no attention. He wanted to read this book and not deal with them. He didn't want to deal with them, period. Okay, well, he did kind of want to gloat a bit that he took them all down, but he didn't want to have another conflict, despite the fact he enjoys fighting. Issei is a strange creature, and he enjoyed being strange. It was one of his quirks. He enjoys fighting, but also doesn't like conflict. He wants to be left alone, yet he enjoys fighting. Such a weird man. Issei took a seat in the homeroom class, still reading the book. It was a large book, and it was a very good one. World War II was his favorite war in terms of studying it, its history and just everything about it except the Holocaust. He didn't enjoy the mass genocide. Killing was one thing, but mass murder? Hell nah, that wasn't cool. But he did enjoy the tank warfare on the Western Front and the Pacific Theater. I mean who doesn't love carriers and battles right? As he took his seat, the white-haired, itty-bitty-titted female took a seat nearby, her gaze on him. He noticed her gaze, but never gave any sort of indication that he noticed. He just ignored her and kept reading, without a care in the world. He wasn't afraid of them at all, knowing they knew to leave him the alone. He just wanted to get through life despite the fact becoming a devil would eventually throw a wrench into his plans. I mean his parents would be so old while he looked so young. He would outlive them. He would outlive his wife, if he married a human. 
he would outlive his kids it wasn't fair. He had so much on his plate, yet all he did was read his book, blissfully ignorant of what was around him. As the day went by, Issei noticed more and more that the devils he attacked were watching him. He was getting kind of irritated with it, despite knowing why they were. He guessed it was because he completely destroyed them and the only one who hurt him was the crimson-haired beauty, Rias Gremry, yet she didn't do much damage at all. He didn't even try hard, not that they knew anything about it. So, Issei was spied upon, even during lunch when he sat alone in the corner. He felt so many eyes on him, it was ridiculous. All he wanted was to be left alone, but no he had to be spied upon. So the day ended quite uneventful. The people who attacked him left him alone, he wasn't approached by anyone, the teachers left him in peace. It was a quiet day with a good book. It was a good day, a great day, a fantabulous day. Issei walked home in peace, reading a good book. When he opened the door, he was assaulted by the fantastic smell of a home-cooked meal. He put his book down near the stairs banister and walked into the kitchen, smiling. Good afternoon, Issei. We are going to have dinner early. Your father has worked very hard today, as you can see, and the house is almost finished being set up. So he is very hungry and I am just about to call him in. His mother said with a smile. Dear, dinner is ready. Issei's father showed up shortly, a big smile on his face. Thank you, dear, and welcome home, Issei, he said as he took a seat. His mother placed a bowl of Spanish rice, fajita chicken, grilled bell peppers, grilled onions, grilled mushrooms, and a plate of tortillas onto the table. She then placed three plates onto the table and smiled. Dig in, she said. The men of the family wasted no time and tore into the food before them, making giant chicken fajita tacos before them. They both grinned at each other. Ha! Mine is bigger, Issei. Yeah? Well, mine is spicier. Issei gloated as he grabbed the ghost pepper canister and put a nice helping of the super spicy pepper onto his chicken and rice. What? Two can play at that game. His father taunted, placing more pepper onto his chicken, more than what Issei did. His mother looked at both of them with an oh dear expression and smiled. It was family bonding time, and while it wasn't exactly appropriate at a dinner table, it was what her family did. She wouldn't have it any other way. In fact, she grinned. Oh yeah, boys? She taunted, pulling out a can of scorpion pepper, peppering her chicken. Both of the men in the family turned to her with wide eyes of surprise and fear. Issei's mother just put on the hottest pepper onto her chicken, which blew the hotness of the ghost pepper out of the water. D dear? Are you sure that is a good idea? Issei's father asked, concerned for his wife. What? Are you saying I can't take this? Well, not only you two can eat spicy foods, his mother said, taking a bite of her chicken. With one chew, Issei's mother began to sweat and she spat out her food, sticking her tongue out as she grabbed a glass of water and drank it. Little did she know, water makes spicy foods even worse. She screamed and began to run through the kitchen, wanting to find something to take away the pain. Dear, I told you you shouldn't. Okay, drink this he said, placing a cup of milk before her which was downed instantly. As he tried to pour another, her mother pushed the cup away and grabbed the jug, drinking it straight from the jug, chugging it like it was the first drink she had after a week in the desert. Issei chuckled quietly and just began to eat his meal, before his eyes watered and he moved from the desk like a rocket, going into the freezer and grabbing the gallon of ice cream. His father looked at them incredulously and laughed. They all began to eat the ice cream together ignoring the food that was on the table until later. It was just the Hyatt family. They weren't perfect, but they loved each other. The dinner ended very nicely, despite the fact all three of them wanted to compare sizes by trying to eat spicy pepper. It ended with a laugh and good talking, but it ended all the same. Issei had retired to his room. As part of a teenager thing, he hid in his room most of the time. Right now, he was reading a book while looking out the window. He was sitting on a very expensive and comfy chair, his feet on the desk as he read the book. Unknown to him, a sinister force gathered at his door. Ding dong. The doorbell rang and his mother answered the door. She smiled and looked at the people standing before the door. There was a crimson-haired, big-titted beauty. 
a black-haired, big-titted beauty, a white-haired, itty-bitty-titted beauty, and a handsome blonde-haired male with such a cool guy face. Can I help you? She asked. Rhea smiled. You must be his mother. I am Rhea and I am one of Issei's friends from school. What? You are one of his friends? Well, come on in then. Honey, who is at the door? The father asked. A bunch of Issei's friends. Really? Are you just yanking my chain? No. They really claim they are his friends. Wow, he got friends fast. I knew taking this job was going to work out wonderful. Has he had trouble making friends? Asked the Kino. Quite. When he was younger he was different the doctors couldn't find out what was wrong with him. As they said he was perfectly healthy. He was just gaining weight quickly while not looking any different. But he got normal when he was twelve. Just one day, all of the abnormal weight disappeared. His father stated, looking at his wife. She looked quite sad and concerned. Yes, he had trouble making friends because he was different. He did make a friend when he was younger. It lasted a year but she just up and left what was her name dear. Ophis honey. Oh yes, her name was Ophis. Rius looked at Aquino with a bit of surprise and concern. But Aquino shook her head slightly. There was no way that Issei made friends with the infinite dragon god. Oh, I'm so sorry for taking up your time. Issei is up in his room. I'm sure he would be happy to see all of you. His mother said with a big smile. Thank you. Rhea said, heading upstairs with her peerage. Issei was still reading his book. He heard the doorbell but paid it no attention, not caring about who was at the door. It had nothing to do with him most of the time, so why be nosy right? However, it was then he felt their eyes again. His eyes narrowed and his shoulders slumped before he put on a smile. He placed the book on the ground and began to slowly turn around. Well, if it isn't the itty bitty titty committee and her big breasted friends. Suck it. Kaneko said. Issei gave her a wicked grin before looking up at Rias. So how can I help you? Rias immediately bowed to him, which wiped the smile off his face. The others all bowed to him, obviously in apology. We want to apologize for attacking you yesterday afternoon. We weren't told the entire nor the true story. We were just following instructions. It's fine. I'm not upset. Plus, if anything, I feel quite good since I won. It was fun, Issei said with a chuckle. Though, just because I said it was fun I don't want it to happen again, he said with a laugh. Rhea stopped bowing and smiled, looking at him. I thank you for your forgiveness. So, Issei was it? Issei nodded. What are you going to do now, since you don't have a master? Be normal. Get a job. A life. A wife. A family. Live and die. Enjoy life. I haven't thought about it. It wasn't my choice to become a devil. I was forced into this life. The man I served was a pompous jackass who thought he was strong and picked a fight with the church. He was cut down, and I was freed, Issei said with a sigh, looking out the window at the beautiful mountains in the distance. So, to answer your question I don't know everything changed when he turned me. I will outlive my parents, I will outlive any human there is so. I don't know but I will find my way. I always have, Rias frowned. A lot of the reincarnated devils don't know what to do either. You aren't the first one to become lost. They really use their master and the master's peerage for guidance and they tend to find happiness that way. Well, while that may be true for them I am sure there are more devils like my master, crueling using their servants for their own gain. Not caring at all for them. There is, but most devils take care of their servants quite well. I see. Why do you ask about what my plans are? Why did you come here if all you wanted to do was apologize? I talked with your parents, and they told us about you so I thought I would see how you are doing. I was told that your time as a devil wasn't very good, so I just was curious. I see well I told you so, what now? I don't know. I guess we will just leave. Issei nodded and watched as Kaneko, Rias and Kiba left. Akino began to leave but turned around and smiled at him. You know, sweetie, we are very happy with Rias. Her family is known for their compassion with their servants. Just something to keep in mind. Rias has eight pawns open, Akino said, walking away leaving Issei behind. Issei sighed and turned back to his book, but was unable to read it. He groaned and climbed into his bed, 
shutting his eyes as he thought about what just transpired. Before long he drifted into a nice relaxing rest. It was the next day, the day after Rias apologized with her peerage to Issei for attacking him with the intent to kill. The student council, Sona and her peerage have yet to approach him with apologies, but he wasn't angry in the slightest. He honestly was quite carefree and nonchalant. He just wanted to live his own life his own way. He had given thought about joining Rias's peerage after Akino talked to him, telling him that Rias was quite an awesome master, but Issei was going to decline the offer that was standing. He just wanted to live his own life the way he wants to, enjoy his own life because he won't be here forever. A short meaningful life is better than a long meaningless one. A short life filled with fun is better than a long one filled with boredom. Issei had kept himself away from Rias and the others, only focusing on his schoolwork. He hate lunch alone, he was in P.E. alone and he was left alone. It was a peaceful day. He was currently taking his normal route home, which was actually the long way home but it was filled with more scenery. It was about a three mile trip home, but it was through a nearby forest which was gorgeous this time of year in April. It was the middle of spring, and it was a lovely time of year in Japan. The trees were blossoming. Pink sakura trees, tall green trees, bushes everywhere. He even saw several wild animals, deer and the like. He was quiet, despite his powers making him quite a loud monster. As Issei crossed the bridge that went over a large creek, a figure appeared. It was a slender girl with long black hair down to her, and with violet eyes. Issei immediately sensed the power coming from the girl, albeit very faint. Not many people could sense things like this, but Issei recognized it as familiar to the aura from another person the man that helped him with his powers and gave him the tool to let him fix his weight. He knew the other man was a fallen angel, so he knew that the girl before him was a fallen angel. Excuse me, your Issei Hayadu, right? From Ku Academy? The girl asked. She had such a lovely voice, very light. Issei nodded. Yes, I am Issei. Do you need something? He asked, tilting his head slightly. Issei didn't know who this girl was. But he knew she was a fallen angel, so he knew that she knew that he was a devil. He assumed she had ulterior motives to talking to him, so he might as well play along to see what's going to happen. He hoped it would be amusing. Hi, um, are you lost? Is there anything I can help you with? As sort of. The girl said, obvious faker. There is no way this is her true form, I can't believe it. I just wanted to ask you a quick question. Shoot, are you seeing anyone right now? Oh uh, no, that's wonderful, she said with a very happy voice. Is it? Huh, in that case, since you are single, do you think you would like to go out with me? The girl asked. Issei struggled hard not to raise an eyebrow. Eh? He asked. He was confused. All right, that's unexpected. Maybe this will be amusing after all. Go out with you? I a uh, what? I've been watching you and you pass by on this bridge a lot and I don't know you seem so gentle and you are very handsome. Issei blinked, completely playing his act of being a clueless dolt. I would like you to be my boyfriend. She stated with determination. All right. Issei said, tilting his head with a trademark gentle smile. T that's great. T then let's go on a date this Sunday. All right, I will meet you in front of the train station at 11. Issei said smiling. The girl bowed her head. T thanks. She began to run off but stopped. And my name is Yuma Amano. Issei gave her a small wave, while smiling before walking home. Issei grinned to himself, his hands in his pockets as he normally walked. He was like totally cool like that. Very interesting. I think this will turn out very amusing for me. I wonder what her true aim is that is the true mystery but I guess I can't complain about a date with such a pretty girl. She did have quite a nice rack, huh? Issei got home safely later that night and ate dinner with his family, not bringing up the girlfriend thing. Time skipped to the future. Dun dun dun. It was Sunday at 10.30 and Issei arrived at the train station. He was dressed in a simple pair of tan cargo pants with a red t-shirt with an American superhero that used some kind of metal or iron for armor. He waited patiently, leaning against the pole, waiting for his supposed day to arrive. He had considered that this was all a prank, for humor, which wouldn't be too amusing for him. But he wanted to give the fallen angel the benefit of the doubt 
that she had real motive to talking to him that was more than just a prank. It was eleven finally and Yuma appeared with a big smile on her face. She was wearing a tan dress with white frills on the bottom. She looked very cute. Were you waiting long? Nah, I just arrived here myself. I'm just glad you came. Giggity. Issei was immediately grabbed by Yuma, and she buried his arm in her, right between her two melons. He was then dragged along by Yuma who was obviously quite eager for this date. He let out a noise as a complaint that he was being dragged, but only out of shock. She dragged him throughout the area, taking him to several shopping centers. Damn it I had to go shopping in order to find out this fallen angel's motives maybe this is the motive. Maybe this is what she wanted to do. Make me suffer. Yuma dragged Issei to a shoe store, which was like kryptonite to a man. As he entered he felt all his strength leaving his body and he wanted OT collapse right there on the floor. But then something came from the heaven. It was one of those little booths where you can sit and try on new shoes. Issei followed Yuma to where she was going to go and took a seat on the booth, his body recovering from the curse of the shoe store. After the shoe shopping, without any ING purchases, they went to lunch. Issei had gotten a nice barbecue bacon cheeseburger with a cup of water, while Yuma got some chicken fingers with a shake. When they sat in their booths, Issei actually finally gotten a good luck at Yuma and her outfit for the day. He didn't notice it was a tan dress, but he finally noticed that it wasn't exactly modest either at least the way she wore it. The dress had buttons at the, for a total of six buttons however, she had half of them unbuttoned, which gave Issei a very generous view of her assets. He automatically knew she did it on purpose. That shake looks delicious. Back in my old town, shakes were hard to come by. Want some? Only if you don't mind. Issei said with a smile. Not at all. Yuma said, taking a spoon and giving Issei a nice spoonful of ice cream. She had actually eaten of this spoon and was offering it to him. Amusing. She was leaning over the table, elbows pressing against her which made them appear bigger. She defiantly was doing this on purpose. Enjoying the view? She asked. Issei ate the ice cream and looked away, not going to answer that. Of course he did, but it wasn't like he was purposely looking. She was pretty much forcing those godly orbs upon him. The date ended with Issei taking Yuma to the nearby park. They were both walking towards the beautiful fountain in the middle of the park. The sun was going down and cast the sky in a beautiful symphony of red and orange. Very pretty. Yuma leaned in and pressed his arm in between her, smiling up at him. Issei, did you have a good time tonight? Surprisingly, yeah. Thank you for taking me on a such a wonderful date. I hope we can do it again sometime. Issei said, giving her his trademark gentle smile, which wasn't an act. He actually did have fun, despite the horror or of the shoes shopping. Yuma was caught by surprise and pulled back a bit, which got a confused look from Issei. She was conflicted. On one hand, she knew she had to remove him from the picture. He was too strong and was opposing her plans to rise up to help Azazel and her other fallen angel leaders. She wanted to be just like them, strong and important. If she was able to remove the strong existence, as Azazel had put it, she would rise through the ranks and maybe she would be recognized by the leaders. On the other hand, she had such a wonderful date and someone had finally showed her some kindness. It was something that didn't happen very often. Someone truly treated her with kindness and respect, and not even once did he purposely look or comment on her, despite her pretty much giving them to him. He was a true gentleman and for once. It was like she could finally have a friend. Sure, she had many fallen angel comrades, but comrades aren't friends they wouldn't risk anything for her and would abandon her if they had to. A friend would stay by her side till the bitter end and she saw that in him. She saw the goodness in his heart. You um it was my pleasure. W would you do something for me as to commemorate this occasion? Anything you want I would do anything for you. Issei smiled happily. Issei could tell that any motive she had, she was second-guessing herself. This day had proven very amusing and he honestly was still amused by the girl. He wondered what she was second-guessing herself on until a thought came to his head. He let out a much bigger smile as a conclusion reached himself. She was second-guessing herself on killing him. Now this was truly amusing. Can you see can you Yuma said, only for tears to begin to fall from her eyes. She was crying and this wiped the smile off Issei's face. 
He hated when people cried, especially females. I'm sorry. But I went this far already a and I can't turn back now otherwise I will be a laughing stock. Yuma said as tears fell from her eyes even more. She stepped back and a bright light enveloped her. Issei watched as the figure before him changed. Her violet eyes grew a more mature and sharp tone to them, despite the fact she was crying. Her already large grew in size somehow, and her dress disappeared and turned into basically a leather thong. Yup. A leather ing thong. How the does anyone fight in a thong? During this transformation, he had gotten quite the view of her bear and he had to admit to himself, he enjoyed the view. Despite enjoying the view, Issei had already absorbed some of the power from the tubes, gaining 4,000 pounds, the same amount of power he used against Rias and her friends. He noticed she was still crying as she formed a purple light spear in her hands, as two large black wings appeared from her back. They were black and feathery a fallen angel. She was crying she really didn't want to kill him, yet she thrusted the spear at his gut. As the spear neared his gut, an unimaginable and amusing sound was heard. Dink. The spear just hit his rock hard and was like a nail hitting a piece of metal. It was harmlessly casted away. W what? Yuma cried in shock. She thrusted the spear again. Dink. Nothing changed even though she put all of her power into the thrust. Smoke did appear at the contact site from both attacks, but no damage was shown except a red mark. Yuma looked up at Issei with fear as he cracked his neck and crossed his arms, giving her a smirk. Are we done yet? Yuma fell to her knees, tears falling. I'm so sorry I, Issei sighed and nodded. I could tell you didn't want to. I'm actually a little surprised you still tried to kill me, but I can't blame you either way. I know that it's like to second guess yourself. You aren't angry with me? Well, I'm so sorry. I really didn't want to kill you. Just don't make me go shoe shopping again. I hated that. W what? Issei smiled and chuckled. No I'm not upset or angry with you in all honesty. I just wanted to make you stop crying. He said with a gentle smile. You were having a hard time choosing what to do that is why you also didn't put much strength into either spear of light. Not that it would have mattered. You were so conflicted that it was so easily read. I am just glad that you made the right decision in the end, despite the fact if I was weak, I would have been killed. Yuma sniffled and looked up at Issei now with fear. H how are you W what are you W who are you? Huh, how am I? Fine. What are you? A devil unfortunately. Who are you? Batman. Issei said with a grin. Yuma didn't laugh and still looked up at him. Issei sighed. I am still alive because of my own power. I can absorb mass. When I absorb mass, my body gets heavier and tougher. You will find that with each increase of my body weight, my entire body gets harder and harder. Tougher and tougher. My body also gains massive strength. Even if you tried, you could not have killed me period. I am unfortunately a reincarnated devil though I want to remove such a thing from my own body. I do not want to be a devil but I have yet found a way to purge this from myself. Oh I. W what do you want? Eh? Issei asked, confused. Why would I want anything? Well you are a guy I'm a girl I'm at your mercy. Like a light bulb, Issei's face brightened up as the blood rushed to his cheeks. Oh well I'm not going to do anything like that to you all I want is for you to be happy. Oh well, you don't to kneel anymore. He said offering his hand. I'm not going to hurt you. Yuma accepted the gesture and he lifted her up to her feet, where she gave him a smile. It seemed all her tears were gone. Well, if you did want anything, I would have been more than happy to provide anything you could desire. A New York thing. She said, drawing out the last word to emphasize it. Issei blushed again and rubbed the back of his head. This girl before him did an emotional 360 and turned from a fearing crying girl to a flirtatious bombshell. Issei coughed. So, what is your plan now? Yuma's face turned to that of worry and seriousness. I don't know I guess they will find out I've abandoned them on our mission and they will want to hunt me down though I will still be able to be a fallen. Angel, I see do you have anywhere to go? No. They will still find me. Whom you could crash at my place. Ah really? Sure I pay for my own rent my father is kind of hard on a 17 year old boy ha, huh? but I've been paying rent since I was 15 he is still shocked that I have a job. Why are you paying rent? 
because it allows me to do whatever I want in the house, bring whoever I want over not that I bring anyone over my mother hated my father for making me pay rent just so I can be happy. Since my childhood wasn't that great, but my mother got over it as she saw that I had no problem whatsoever and provided the money for rent. Yuma blinked. You have a weird family, says the chick wearing a leather thong with two large black wings out her back. Oh yeah, so if you want, you can crash at my place. I can figure something out for you to sleep somewhere. Actually, my father is turning the basement into a bedroom. It's going to be a massive bedroom, and it was going to be for me. All right, I think I figured it out, he said, pretty much talking to himself during the last half of the conversation. So it's all up to you if you want to live with me for a while or so. Yuma blushed and smiled. I think I will take you up on that offer, but don't you know there are other devils in this town who may not like this? They are nothing they already tried stepping on my toes. I crushed them with ease. Issei said, waving it off. They wouldn't dare mess with me again. As long as you are in my house, you are safe from any threat there is. Issei said before a thought crossed his mind and he laughed. Here is an idea I am going to make a new faction. The Juggernaut faction. Led by me, the Juggernaut himself. I will be a superhero. He said with a giant laugh as he began to make his way home with Yuma. Issei chuckled and shook his head before turning to Yuma. All right Yuma, you know where I live right? She nodded. Good, meet me there when you get your belongings. I will figure something out for you. T thank you but my name isn't Yuma. It's not. It's Rainer. Issei smiled and nodded. All right Rainer I will be waiting. I will be there soon. Thank you so much. Reina said, bowing to him and showing off her massive. It was night time, following the date with Rainer. Issei was with his father, moving his bed down into the basement. They had taken apart the frame and eventually moved everything down to the basement before they began to work on putting it back together. It was around 10 p. and when Issei heard the doorbell. Issei was about to go up and get it when he heard the front door open and his mother's voice. Hello, can I help you? His mother asked sweetly. He then heard Raynar's low and seductive voice. Yes, I am here to see Issei. Oh my Issei! Dear! His mother yelled for them and both men walked up the stairs and appeared. Oh hi Raynar! Issei said, smiling at her and rubbing the back of his head. Raynar was no longer wearing a thong as she was now wearing a pair of black yoga pants and a white t-shirt that did nothing to hide the fact her were huge she was also showing quite a bit of cleavage. Hi Issei! She said with a smile. I say, this girl who is she? This is Rainer, and she just transferred to this town, and I offered her to stay here until she can find somewhere to stay on her own. I say. His mother said shocked. Why you can't bring? His father laughed a bit. He is paying rent, and it was under our conditions. Plus it's not like he's going to bang her. Dad. Issei yelled out, his face red. Dear. His mother scolded. She is right there. Rainer was blushing a bit and stayed quiet. Issei grabbed Rainer by her hand and pulled her into the house before taking her down into the basement. But before he could move, his father called out to him. Hey Issei. What? Issei said, flustered due to the little conversation they had a minute earlier. His dad gave him a lecherous smile and pulled out his wallet. From his wallet he gave Issei a four-pack of condoms, all in which Rainer could see. Remember son use a sock if you get lucky tonight. The basement is quite soundproof with the door closed. Dad. Issei yelled, blushing before looking back in horror. Rainer had heard and seen the whole thing and she was red in the face as well. Issei groaned and ushered Rainer down the stairs before closing the door. Once the door closed, Rainer began to laugh. Wow, your family is quite something. I am so sorry that you had to witness that. It's quite all right, but Reina said slowly before moving to Issei, leaning into his ear. I don't like condoms, I prefer natural, and it's good that the room is soundproof. I can be quite the screamer. Rainer grinned, blowing into his ear as she buried his arm between her massive before moving backwards, giggling innocently. Issei's face became so hot, that if a water droplet would land on him, steam would rise. Issei coughed and tucked his boner between his legs before kneeling down at the bed and beginning to work on fixing his bed, trying to not think about those dangerous words that came from Rainer's throat. Rainer giggled at the sight of him, and did get quite an eyeful of the meat between his legs. After about ten minutes of working on the bed, 
his large California king-sized bed was made. He has a California king-sized bed because of how tall he is. No other bed could let him sleep on the bed without his feet hanging off. So while he doesn't need the width of the bed, it was all because he was very tall. He sighed and stood up, going over to his dresser before taking out a change of clothes. He placed his shirt and socks on top of the dresser and only grabbed his underwear and a pair of shorts. I'm going to take a shower. My father said he got the hot water working down here. Issei said, moving through the basement before entering the bathroom. Issei turned on the water and waited for a bit, and sure enough, hot steamy water began to pour from the faucet. Issei smiled and undressed before climbing into the shower stall. He had a western shower stall down here as he was quite a fan of the western world. Rainer sat on his bed and removed her socks, before rubbing her feet. As she was hearing the water pour, a devious grin spread across her face. From her suitcase, she removed a change of clothes, which was a pair of shorts, socks and a t-shirt. Yes. She didn't remove a bra or panties and if one looked, either of these items were in her suitcase. Period. Rainer quietly moved through the basement before entering the bathroom. She opened up the shower stall door and climbed into the shower behind Issei. Aya. W what? W what are you doing? Issei demanded, his blush rising. He had turned around and gotten another eyeful of the wide body Rainer had. And while she wasn't bared down south, she was trimmed. There was a landing strip of neat black hair, like an arrow to point where the pot of gold was. Showering. What else does one do in a bathtub? Rainer asked, obviously acting innocent to her own actions. Why yeah but why are you in here when I am in here? So I can shower. You could have waited. I could have, but then I wouldn't have been able to wash your back. Like this. Rainer said seductively before shoving her generous upon his back. Issei's eyes went wide and his body involuntarily shuddered in pleasure as the soft orbs touched his body. He then felt her rub herself up and down upon his back, and every few seconds, Issei shuddered in ecstasy. She had soaked up her own before rubbing his back, cleaning him with those obscene movements. Issei ended up having to lean against the wall of the bathroom as his legs were quivering. Issei was sporting a semi-hard-on, as he was doing his damn hardest to ignore the fact that she was using her gorgeous body to clean his back. It was then he felt a slender hand gently grip his manhood, gently rubbing him up and down. Ah! Issei groaned and screamed, jerking himself out of his stupor, as he felt Rainer grabbing him from behind. W what are you doing? Cleaning you of course. Rainer said with a seductive smile looking him square in the eyes as she kept up her ministrations. After about ten seconds, Rainer cooed and smiled. Well, it looks like somebody is enjoying himself. W-L-I. Rainer smiled at him. You need to speak clearly why is it Issei is getting so excited? Rainer teased. Issei gulped and hesitated to answer, but a very firm grip appeared on his manhood, and he yelped in pain and pleasure. I'm waiting for my answer, Issei. She asked seductively and at the same time, seriously. Cause you are a girl and I am a guy and you are grabbing on my junk. Issei said, getting some balls and yelling at her as his eyes was closed. Oh I see does this feel good to you? She asked, turning him around and placing her on his own, still cleaning him with her own hand. Why yeah, that's a good boy so honest. Issei shut his eyes and flinched, trying his hardest to think but God gave men two heads but only enough blood to run one of them. He was already short-circuiting, as if someone was helping him or in his case, screwing him over. He got his brain back online and he pushed Rainer away before getting out of the shower, running to his clothes. Rainer smiled as he ran off, chucking to herself. Such a big boy I think I will be able to enjoy myself. She said to herself, ten minutes later, it was supper time, and a late one at that. The entire family, including Rainer was eating dinner which was hot turkey gravy and mashed potatoes. His mother had waited to cook so she could cook for Rainer as well. She was a very awesome mom. Issei was sitting on the other side of the table with Rainer to his right while his father sat across from him and his mom sat across from her. Rainer however had her chair scooted very close to Issei, so they looked quite intimate. As Issei was eating his dinner, he felt a very cool and feminine hand on his inner thigh gently rubbing him as it made its way north slowly and teasingly. 
East Say's face began to heat up so he began to eat his meal with a red face, trying to ignore what was happening. In all honesty, he was still trying to figure out why Rainer was doing this. But only one thought came to his mind and it kind of scared him. Rainer liked him. A lot. This was scary because his life wasn't very good. It wasn't filled with fun and it was pretty much filled with torment. He had only one friend his entire life and she abandoned him when he was dying. Then after so long, another girl appeared and now she was getting quite close to him. It was just something he wasn't accustomed to. He really had no idea what was going on and it was kind of scary. It wasn't like he hated it. In fact though he wouldn't like to admit it, he loved the attention. It was making him a very happy man. Hey honey are you okay? His mother asked. Your face is all red. Are you feeling sick? Issei looked up and noticed the evil glint in Reynard's eyes, his father's all-knowing smirk and his mother's concern. I'm fine. I'm just tired. His father grinned. Tired? Well, I guess you should go to bed soon. I hear a bed is a great place to relax and get some rest among other things. He said, looking at Reynard with a smirk. His father was a ING pervert and was trying to get his son laid. Best dad ever. Issei finished his meal and excused himself quickly. He had wolved down the entire meal and washed his dishes before running to his room in the basement, diving into the bed. He turned on the ceiling fan and quickly curled up in his big bed. He had laid out a futon for Rainer as a temporary sleeping situation, so it was on the floor at the foot of his bed. He shut his eyes and tried to get to sleep, but to no avail. He wasn't sleepy. He wasn't tired. He was turned on. This was so not working for him at this time at night. He sighed and that is when he heard the door open. Issei quickly shut his eyes and got into his sleeping position, on his side facing the wall opposite of the door. He heard the footsteps approaching his bed but he didn't expect to feel his bed move. Rainer had climbed into his bed. Issei laid very still and waited as it for an eternity. But then he felt Rainer's against his back, and she was hugging him from behind. She wasn't touching him erotically like before, but it was like she was just using him as a teddy bear. It was then his mind said, and he noticed that she was bare. She was and hugging onto him. She was nude, all natural. Issei's face heated up immensely. He was going to turn around and do something about the situation, but he heard the sound of sleep. Rainer was asleep, peacefully so, as if this was a lullaby. Issei felt tired as well and began to fall asleep himself, in the arms of a beautiful fallen angel. It was Monday morning and Issei began to wake up. Why did he wake up? Well, there was a weight upon his waist, and it wasn't exactly normal to feel such a weight. So he opened his eyes and there she was, Rainer, like when she was born. She was sitting on his waist, where he only slept in his boxers so he could feel her secret wonder against his own. This brought his little soldier to attention real fast. As if it wasn't enough, her big were hanging out for him to see in all its glory. Something tells him that she should at least cover up, right? I mean most girls would scream if he saw them. Right. Rainer, what are you doing? Waking you up silly. Well it worked you can get off me now and put on some clothes. Ah, uh, you don't like my body? Whether I do or don't isn't the problem I don't think females walking around or males for that matter is normal. Rainer giggled. Oh, you really haven't had any friends before, have you? Or a social life? That is not the point, it's just common sense. I think your common sense is screwy. I think your head is screwy. I think we should screwy. I think we're done here. Issei said, tossing Rainer gently to his left, making her hit his soft bed. She smiled and giggled. Ah, such a poor sport. While I would love to stay and talk, I got school and it beats talking to you. Issei said, grinning and standing up before heading over to his dresser. He grabbed his clothes that he wore last night for dinner and got dressed, before heading up the stairs with Rainer behind him. Don't you have school? I may look this young, but I'm actually twenty. Ah, I see. Issei said, not really sure what else to say. Geez, an older chick? It's every guy's wet dream, Issei thought. Issei got him a hot ham and cheese toast sandwich, before heading to school eating it. Rainer stayed behind in the house with his mother while his father went out to work. Issei sighed as he finally escaped the clutches of the fallen angel seductress. He walked towards his school, only to be sidetracked when he heard a voice. 
East say, wait up, what now Rainier? I want to come clean, about, why I was here. Why I was here in this town I think it's only proper for you to know. Can it wait? Rainier shook her head. My previous comrades are going to kill a girl and take her sacred gear. East say raised the brow. Take her sacred gear? Hmm. And I guess you will tell me to stay away from wherever these friends of yours are? They aren't my friends and no I wasn't going to tell you that. I want to help you save the girl and stop them. What makes you think I want to help the girl and stop your friends? They aren't bothering me. Rainer glared at him. I know you better than this. You don't know me. You just met me. He say, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do want to save the girl I like this town. It means a lot to me. I'm not going to let anything happen to my town. Rainer smiled and began to pat his head like a dog. Good boy. Issei grabbed her hand and bit her wrist a little roughly, though not enough to leave a bruise or bring blood. Oh, don't treat me like your pet. Now, where are they and when is the best time to strike? Night time and they are at the church on the far hill. Ah, uh, let me ask you something. How does one remove a sacred gear? Issei asked, as he began to head towards the church. We have a complex ritual that would need to be fulfilled. It needs to be on a night with a full moon, at midnight, and proper spells and other magical stuff needs to be correctly done. I see could this ritual remove other things? What do you mean other things? And I don't really see why not. We just need to tweak the spells. Hmm, this intrigues me. What are you trying to do? Become human. East they said before moving quicker towards the church. Rius was sitting in the old school building, drinking tea, when Akino appeared in the room. Rius. I have some information about our juggernaut friend. Really? Is it any good? I think so it seems he has taken a fallen angel into his household. Rius raised a brow. Really? Who is this fallen angel? Did you research why she is here? Yes it seems there is a group of fallen angels in the abandoned church on the hilltop. I do not know what is going on in the church, but I can sense some dark and evil magics within. Well done but we cannot make a move just yet. Tell me something do you think East Say is siding with the fallen angels? I cannot say for sure. He doesn't seem like the type to do bad things at least things that would harm the town or others. He is a bit mischievous though I can sense a bad boy kind of thing from him. But I think he isn't on their side. Either way I want to keep an eye on him. I will continue with my observations and my investigations. Thank you Akino. Ria smiled. East Say was standing before the church feeling the odd feeling that a devil would get from something holy. He smiled and moved to the forest in front of the church, taking a spot in a tree as he observed the church itself. Rainer climbed into the tree and climbed in between his legs, which earned a groan from Issei. What are you doing? Sitting in a tree with you. But why are you up next to me? Because this is the best spot to look at the church and I don't want to sit without something to put my back against. Issei narrowed his eyes at her excuse though he couldn't call her out on the bullshit as it was a very good excuse, so he just quieted down and closed his eyes to take a nap until night fell. It was ten o'clock in the morning. Inside the church, a fallen angel known as Calawarner was setting up the cross that would be used to hold the victim in place for the spell. She was a tall and busted woman with long navy blue hair which covered her right eyes. Her eyes were also brown. She wore a violet trench coat with a wide collar, a mini skirt which matched the trench coat. The top was open at her which gave quite a good view of her and cleavage. She also had a gold necklace. She looked around and spotted Donasik who wore a trench coat and a hat, both gray. Should we still go through with this Rainer has Abbott on us? Donasik sneered at Calla Warner. Of course we go through with this. She was weak. We can still go through with the plan. It will help Azazel after all. I'm not so sure we should be doing this anymore. Middle said. She was girl with blonde twin tails and blue eyes. She had a gothic style attire, which was a dress, a black bow on the front, white thigh-high socks, and black shoes. She had a black bow on top of her hair as well. She was very cute and obviously the youngest. Donna Seek was obviously the new leader. If you want to leave go ahead but you won't be able to escape before Freed kills you. Donasik said with a maniacal grin. Middle gulped and nodded. And no, I'm good with going through with this. For Azazel, for Azazel. Calawarner said, also a bit nervous and scared. Donasik nodded and grinned. For Azazel. It was eleven o'clock at night, and Issei jumped down from the tree before popping his neck using his right hand. 
Rainer flew down with her wings out now, and a spear at the ready. You don't have to come with me I don't want you to risk getting hurt. I won't abandon you you are my leader now. A leader? W what are you talking about? Let's go and we need to hurry up before midnight. Reina said, ignoring Issei's confusion. She kicked open the church door and entered, only to be greeted by Fried Selzen. O-H-I. If it isn't the traitorous slut and her friend, hey, I'm not a slut. Issei complained, making a frowny face. Fried looked over towards Issei and grinned. Oh, and you are a devil to boot? This will be so much fun. Ah ha ha. Let's play. Fried yelled evilly before taking out two light swords and charging at Issei and Rainer. Rainer flew back behind Issei and watched as Issei put two hands into his pockets before taking them out two seconds later just as both swords were aimed right at his. Dink. What? Fried yelled before slashing wildly. Dink 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 dink. Each time the swords hit, they bounced off harmlessly. Issei grinned and towered over Fried who looked up at Issei who cracked his knuckles. Me. Downstairs in the basement of the church, Danasik was chaining up Asia Argento, the ex-nun who could heal anybody. She was unconscious at the time, with a nice bruise to the side of her head. There was also a red mark on Danasik's left fist. It was then the door to the stairs opened and down the stairs was freed. He was tossed down the stairs and he landed on his face before sliding across the floor, unconscious. Danasik, Cal Warner and Middle turned and saw another scene which was just confusing. Falling down the stairs while making random noises, like Bobby McFerrin, only to get up from the bottom of the floor. Flying down the stairs was Rainer who sighed. You are an idiot Issei. Well, you're a towel. Issei said with a grin, before turning to the fallen angels and the one unconscious excorsist. Well, what do we have here? The traitor and a devil. Why are you here? Issei shrugged. The juggernaut saw a party and he was sad he wasn't invited. So juggernaut crash party and make happy, he said, acting like a dumb brute. Like a barbarian, Donacy glared at the devil. You will leave now or I will kill you. Oh no, whatever shall I do? Issei said, cringing up mockingly, acting all scared. Rainer looked at Middleton and Cal Warner. You all need to stop this. This isn't right. Shut up. What do you know, bitch? Cal Warner. Middleton, kill the traitor. I will handle the devil. Donasik said, summoning a light spear before charging at Issei. Middleton and Cal Warner bother charged at Rainer. But they stopped when they saw Donasik instantly grabbed by the throat by Issei. They also watched as Donasik repeatedly attempted to stab Issei with a spear, only for it to bounce off. W what are you? Donasik yelled out, though a bit raspy. It is not what I am that should concern you, but whom? W who are you? Don't you know who I am? Issei demanded. Donasik shook his head. I'm the mothering juggernaut bitch. Issei squeezed on Donasik's neck, instantly killing him as his neck snapped in two. Issei dropped Donasik to the ground. Huh, Juggernaut not know his own strength. Juggernaut a god. Issei said, flexing. Issei then turned to Rainer who was face palming. Do you have the other two fallen angels Rainer or do you need my help? Remember Rainer, no quarter given for those who with my town. Middleton Cal Warner both stopped their spears and turned to Rainer. We surrender. Cal Warner said. Yeah we never wanted to do this after you left. We figured if you had the sense to stop, that we should too, but Donasik threatened us with death. Issei released Asia from her binds and gave her to Rainer, before motioning with his head for her to go upstairs. Rainer nodded and looked at Calavorner and Middleton. I'm sorry, but you both have to pay for your crimes I'm not the one to let you free Rainer said, flying away. The two fallen angels watched Rainer fly away before turning to Issei who was walking towards them, his footsteps ringing throughout the basement. It sounded like cannons being fired. Issei kept moving forward, his presence causing fear to enter the fallen angel's bones. They began to shake in fear as the man who could not be hurt by anything and could crush a neck without even trying, walked towards them. They could tell that he was an easygoing guy for the most part, but mess with his friends, family or his home, and he goes off like Krakatoa. P please, we don't want to fight you please let us go. Kala Warner pleaded. Please! We didn't want to help him. We just didn't want to die. Cowards. 
Why should I let you live? You threatened my town, Donna Seek did. We didn't. Kellowarner pleaded. That doesn't matter. You still threatened my town by helping him. It was then Rainer came downstairs and looked at them arguing. Rainer. Kellowarner begged. Please help us, Rainer shrugged. Can't help you. Middle gulped and slowly reached her hand up to the top of her dress before bringing it down her body, revealing her small yet developing. Kalawarner watched the younger member perform such a seductive and last attempt of pleasing the man before them. She did the same and removed her dress completely, kneeling before him, submitting to him like a slave would to a master. Middled quickly did the same as Kalawarner, both of them offering their bodies to Issei. Issei narrowed his eyes in annoyance and sighed. What these with you fallen angels and nudity? God damn it, Issei groaned and face bombed, before walking upstairs, ignoring the perverted display downstairs. Rainer, do what you will with them. I don't care. Issei said. Rainer smiled evilly and looked at Kalawarner and Middleton who began to get redressed. Little did he know, Issei was going to regret allowing Rainer this freedom to do what she wanted with the two fallen angel females. An hour later, Issei was sitting on his bed with narrowed annoyed eyes. Before him was Rainer, Middleton and Kalawarner, all standing before him, dressed in their clothes they had before. What the hell is going on here Rainer? What? I wanted some company in this house so I brought these two to live with us. Plus, they owe you for your forgiveness. So you can make them clean the house or something. Aren't I brilliant? That is not the word I would use. Maybe evil genius Issei groaned out. How the hell did you get my family to accept this? Magic. I made them realize you were growing up and stuff. Oh funny Issei said, rolling his eyes. Well I'm going to take a shower alone this time. Issei said, walking into his bathroom before locking the door. He learned from his mistakes. Now that they are alone, Rainer turned to Kalawarner and Middleton. Are you guys okay with staying here? I didn't tell him that you guys wanted to stay with me. Kalawarner looked at Middleton and then nodded. We are sure. We have nowhere to go anyway after what we were going to do if Azazel found out we would have been in big trouble. Like chopping block trouble. Rainer nodded. Same boat. Rainer said as she sat on Issei's large bed. Kalawarner got a big grin. So, what's the story with you and him? Rainer blushed. I, uh, you got a thing for him. Well. Yeah, Reyna said, blushing shyly as her peers looked at her. I could see why strong, brave, and good-looking. I would be lying if I said I didn't feel some attraction to him. Middleton groaned. So all three of us have to compete for him? She complained. Kella Warner and Reyna looked at the young girl shocked. You like him too? Kella Warner asked. Well, duh. After seeing what kind of man that one is, of course I would feel attraction to him. So, how are we going to handle this? Rock, paper, scissors? The two older females giggled and looked at each other before looking at Middleton. You sure still have growing up to do? Raina said, shaking her head. What? I am grown up. Middleton said. You are only sixteen and yet you don't know that fallen angels are quite known for sharing? Calla Warner said. As sharing? Middleton asked, a bit shocked. Rainer looked at Calla Warner before both of them approached the younger member. Yes, sharing. We all share, you say. That is how fallen angels and devils work, but there is more. Rainer said. Oh, like what? Middleton asked. Kala Warner grabbed Middleton and add her earlobe while Rainer add the other. We also enjoy each other in the group. Middleton blushed and stammered, only to back away a bit from the two older women. WLI. Kala Warner and Rainer all laughed, but Middleton ended all that. I think that sounds like fun. Rainer and Kalawarner all looked at Middleton before they all smiled and nodded. It was then Issei opened the bathroom door and walked in, only for a shiver to tingle down his spine. Something evil is afoot these women are planning something. Issei looked at all three women before climbing into his bed. All right I'm going to sleep now so if you girls wouldn't mind you should get some sleep too I laid out some mattresses on the floor for you girls until I find a more permanent solution. Issei said before turning off his lamp, though there was another lamp in the far corner away which gave the room only a dim light. Issei curled up in his bed and smiled as he relaxed in his bed, before he began to fall asleep. As he drifted off to night-night land, he felt the bed move more so than usual, only for three different weights to press around all his body. 
He could only fall asleep as he was held by three lovely women. In the ORC clubroom, Rias was looking out the window before Akino appeared. Rias, I have more news on Issei. Really? Yes. He has taken in two more fallen angels into his home, and it looked like he killed the only male. The leader? Yes, it would seem so. He invaded the church and killed one of the fallen angels. There was also a nun there who vanished. It seems that the first fallen angel hooked her up with a hotel room for a few nights. I see well. Please keep an eye on things I am getting worried about Issei now. I will keep an eye on him. Thanks Akino. Have a good night. The next morning, which was a Tuesday, Issei was waking up to a very interesting situation on his bed. Three women, all, were using him as a pillow of some sort. Rainer used to be on his right side, but she decided that using his crotch as a pillow was a good option. Middled was to his left and Warner was to his right. Their press right up against his arms and he narrowed his eyes and growled in annoyance, and for a moment, he thought of being a good gentleman and staying there until they awoke. Issei moved his body and woke up Kalawarner and Middlet with his sitting up, sending them onto their backs, their faces near Rainer's ass. Their legs spread a bit provocatively which gave him quite an eyeful of the forbidden zone. He then stood up which woke Rainer up as her body moved up with him before slamming back down on the bed. She groaned and rubbed her head looking at Issei who smirked at her before looking at them innocently. I'm so sorry I didn't realize you guys were on my bed sleeping with me. Please forgive me, but I have school. Issei said with a bow, obviously acting innocent towards his own actions of waking them up. They all looked at him with anger but he just smiled at them before getting dressed. He headed upstairs while they were still on the bed, before going to the kitchen where his breakfast was already placed before him, like every morning it was. Bacon and eggs with green peppers grilled to perfection. Yes, it was a delicious and healthy breakfast. His mother was cooking some more food, obviously for his father. About thirty minutes later of silent breakfast time, Issei put his backpack on and headed out to school. Luckily, the three females in the house stayed behind. He made his way to school in silence, his thoughts on the three females in his house. Those those girls don't they know what they do to me. Three gorgeous ladies in my bed, snuggling up to me, showing me their nether regions without any sort of embarrassment at all. They are lucky that I have such control over myself I'm a man for s sake. They need to be more careful. Women need to be more careful, he thought to himself, only to find himself almost smacking right into the school door. He shook his head and entered heading to class. He sat down in his seat once he reached the classroom, before looking out the window with a blank face obviously in thinky land. Damn I knew I forgot something those those damn fallen angels. I forgot to make myself human. Gah, I suppose it's not a total loss the church and cross should still be there just need them to help me remove these damn evil pieces and become human again. Being a devil isn't all bad but I want it to be my own decision to become a supernatural being. Plus, I don't want to outlive my loved ones. He was woken out of his thoughts by the female Kaneko, standing before his desk. He turned his head towards her and gazed up at her with a bored expression, looking at her own blank face. Can I help you? He asked, obviously tired and just wanting to think. You are requested to be in the old clubhouse after school. The student council and my master would like to speak with you. Issei raised a brow and grinned before waving her off. Yeah, yeah, I'll check my schedule. He said, basically telling her there was no ing way he was going. Kaneko went back to her desk, not pushing the issue. She was only told to tell him to come. She wasn't told to force him, not that any of them could force him even together. The class ended quite anticlimactic, with nothing of significance happening. It was just a boring day of class. It was nearing lunchtime, but there was just one more class before lunch. However, with a ten-minute break, it was a very easy change into the next class. Very relaxed. Kaneko went over towards her master, Rias, and stood before her. What did he say? He will check his schedule. I thought as much. I guess we will go with plan B, Rias said, sighing before heading to her own next class. Issei got up from his seat after the class emptied and made his way to the next class. He was thinking about his actions in the church before, remembering how easily he just up and killed someone. He didn't feel any guilt or remorse for doing it it was easy for him. Am I really that cold? I really thought I was an easygoing guy. 
He then thought about killing Rainer before he shook his head violently. There is no way I could kill one of my friends no way. He then thought of killing just an homeless man before shaking his head once more. It has to be only people who are evil like pure evil so I'm a killer didn't see that coming East say thought before sighing and entering his next class. The next class ended very uneventfully so it was lunchtime now, which East say was quite into. He loved food. Food was love. Food was life. His mother was known for packing the greatest lunches ever. She made them for her husband and for East say. They were absolutely delicious and they changed every day. I mean he got the same dishes once in a while, but she would always try something new. He was excited to see what today's menu would be. As he sat down and opened up his bento box, his lone table in the corner suddenly got crowded as Rias and her peerage sat down across from him thought Kiba sat next to him. Then there was Sona and her queen who sat down as well with the queen on the other side of him. He raised a brow at the sudden intrusion of his meal time, and he looked around at them. He decided to ignore their presence and dig into his meal, very excited to see what was in store for his taste buds. So Issei how are you doing? Issei finished his mouthful of the delicious food, known as chicken stir-fry which had all types of bell peppers inside, grilled mushrooms and grilled onions. He then looked at Rias who spoke to him. I'm doing fine. I'm eating lunch so this should be obvious Issei said before taking another big bite of food. Right let's get to the point. Why want to know what the fallen angels are doing in your house and what are you doing with them? Issei finished his meal and looked at Rias before smiling at her. That is my business alone. What happens in my house is my business alone. None of this concerns you so but out. He said not happy with the prying. Rias growled at him which got him to look at her as he ate a spoonful of chicken. It is my concern. This is my territory you are in whether you like it or not. So it is my concern why there is enemies in my town being harbored by some devil. Well, that sucks for you because I dimidant give a dimidam. He said, continuing his meal before stopping after the next bite. But I have no plans of destroying this town. This is my home and my family is here, so I am here to protect it. Those fallen angels are in my house and are causing no problems to the town. In my bed that's another story, he said and everyone noticed that he wasn't exactly happy when he said the last part. He sounded very annoyed. If they are causing issues, why not remove them from your house and town? Sona asked, because they had nowhere else to go. They went too far in their plans and there was a good chance if they returned, they would not be treated nicely. Probably killed. So, I took them in and gave them a second chance at life. They didn't go through with their plans but they were going to until I stepped in and removed the male fallen angel. The first fallen angel is too nice to go through with this, I guess. I dunno. These females are weird. He said, sighing. Are we done here? I want to finish my meal before it gets cold. Rias and Sona shared a glance before nodding. That's fine we were done anyway. We just wanted to figure out what you were doing with fallen angels enjoy your meal. Rias said leaving with everyone, leaving Issei alone. Issei sighed and rubbed his hair before finishing his meal in silence, his thoughts on the talk he just had. The school day ended, and it was quite boring after lunchtime. Nothing happened, no one really talked to him, and the devils left him alone. He was already home and when he entered his room in the basement, he stopped suddenly and stared at the scene before him, shocked. Middle, Calawarner and Rainer all were sitting on one of the matrices he laid out on the floor watching television. It seemed they had hooked up an HDTV in his room, but this wasn't what was shocking. What they were watching was the problem. They were watching one of his dirty porn movies, which he could have sworn were in his old room, hidden under a loose floorboard that he found. Issei quickly got a hold of himself and rushed in, turning off the TV which earned cries from each of the girls. Hey! We were watching that! Middle said. Kala Warner growled at Issei. You could have said you wanted the TV for yourself. That was very mean Issei. You could have just watched it with us. Reina said. Issei quickly ejected the DVD before placing it back into its box. Why the are you watching one of my DVDs? How did you find it? Why are you watching something like this? Reina giggled. Because we could, because we're good, and because it was interesting. So, this is what you like Issei, huh? You did say it was yours. As shut up Rainer. I it's my father's. 
Humph, the three girls laughed together, looking at him. Such a naughty mind you have East say. Did you imagine tying us up like that? Middle said, and using us to your heart's content, while we were helpless? Calawarner replied after, before filling us with your hot seed until we leaked? Rainair followed up. East say was red in the face. I said shut up. It's not mine. Gah. East say said before running upstairs. He was so red in the face that they all knew that they were right on the money. Rainer grinned at her two cohorts. Well that was very enjoyable, indeed. Though I will say, I enjoyed the video. It looked fun. Calla Warner said, shrugging. Middled scratched her head. Why isn't Issei screwing us right now? Rainer blinked and looked at Middleth. What? Middleth asked. I'm just saying, he has three hot girls, waiting for him to take us from behind like animals yet he hasn't done anything it's like he doesn't notice we want him. Kella Warner and Rainer looked at each other before rolling their eyes. They just figured it out Issei is not noticing that they want him. They all then shared a devious grin and were about to open their mouths to discuss their options and planning when Issei came down the stairs. They all turned to him and he coughed. Rainer, I think it's a good time to do what I originally planned to do in the church now. Rainer blinked and woke up out of her perverted mindset when she remembered he wanted to become human. Oh right, we forgot about that. All right, let's go then. Wait, he wants to become human? Kala Warner asked. Rainer nodded. I'm not sure why, but he does. Kala Warner tilted her head in confusion but shrugged. All right, I guess it's possible to remove the evil pieces from him. I'm willing to try it. All three girls and Issei made their way out of the house and to the church. After about a twenty-minute walk in silence, they arrived at the church. Issei went in first, and the fallen angels were about to when they felt a familiar power. Kala Warner turned to Rainer and Rainer nodded. He's here probably to start another war I think we should hurry. Rainer said. Only Issei can stop him. Do you really think so? Kala Warner asked. Yeah, can he? He is going to become human again, so he will definitely be at a disadvantage. Rainer shook her head. No, I think Issei is stronger than what we've seen something about him. I think he may be the strongest being in existence. Kella Warner shrugged and entered the church with the other girls, heading down into the basement where Issei was putting himself against the cross and hooking him up into the chains the best he could. The girls quickly went to work and tightened the chains to his body before going around the cross with magic circles, changing the spell circle around the cross to a different formula and such. It was very dark magic, not fallen angel or devil in nature, but more of a magic itself but dark and forbidden. After about ten minutes, the three girls nodded and all three activated the magic circle which began to send energy into Issei. Issei cringed and began to violent shake screaming in pain. The energy was coursing through his body and it felt like he was being ripped apart from the inside. Stop the magic. He's going to die. Kala Warner said. Rainer nodded but Issei glared at her. Don't you dare stop this. I am not as weak as you girls think I am. Keep going. He screamed out, half in pain. The spell continued for over ten minutes and they watched him writhe and scream in pain as the red energy coursed through him. It was then they watched as eight pawn pieces were ejected from his body and shattered once they contacted the ground. The fallen angels looked over at Issei who was panting and slumped against the chains. Rainer quickly ran to him and removed him from the chains, letting him use her as support. Are you okay Issei? Issei nodded. Did it work? Rainer smiled. Yeah, it did you are human again. Good, good. Issei said with a smile before standing up. His energy was already regenerated and he was back to his normal self. All right, let's go home. Actually, Kella Warner started. What? Issei questioned. Kokabil, one of our old leaders, has appeared in this town. Middle said. So, he's a war lover. Rainer said. It is most likely he is going to start the war again in this town destroying it in the process. Ah, alrighty then let's go. Issei said, sighing as he moved to leave the church. All three girls nodded and quickly followed him. At Ku Academy, Rias, Kaniko and Zenovia were the only ones standing against Kokobiel who was standing on the ground with a cocky smirk on his face. Kiba and Akino were unconscious and bleeding, though it wasn't fatal. How pathetic is this really all you have, Rias Gremory? You are the sister of the great devil king, 
Sirs ex Lucifer yet this is all you have to muster? Pathetic. Shut up. I will not have you insulting my brother. Die. Rius roared, shooting off a massive block of energy. TCH. Kokobio reached up with a hand and blocked the attack but as it was taking up his entire vision, he didn't see Zenovia right next to him, swinging her blade until it was almost to his face. He was much faster though and reached up with a hand and gripped Durandal before moving it to the side. He then turned and shoved his fist into her gut, forcing her to cough up blood before he kicked her away, taking her out of the fight. My turn. Kokobil said with a grin, moving towards Kaneko with an insane grin. He formed a spear of light and kicked Kaneko in the gut before using his other hand and forcing her to kneel before him. He raised his spear of light and thrust it down towards her. She shut her eyes and awaited the quick death but nothing came except a grunt. She opened her eyes and was astonished at the sight before her. Issei was holding onto the wrist of Kokobil, not even struggling as the spear was only an inch away from penetrating her. Issei looked down at her and smiled. You all right? Kaneko nodded. Cool. Issei said before turning to Kokobil. Who the are you? Kokobil demanded as he struggled to get out of the grip of Issei. Depends on your answer. Wait, no it doesn't but it'll ask anyway. What are you doing in my town and what are your plans? I am going to restart the war between the three powers and I will start by rampaging through this town. Ah. Well then Issei said, snapping the wrist of Kokobil without even trying. Ah. Yeah. Kokobil screamed in pain but not before a fist in his gut sent him flying across the courtyard. Rias and Kaneko all watched, eyes wide at what was happening. A leader-class fallen angel was being beaten back by a human. Issei was human now as they noticed. It was then Rainer, Middleton and Calawarner all flew down from the sky, appearing in everyone's vision except Issei as his back was to them. Kokobil turned to the three fallen angels. Help me! Kill this this meddler. The three fallen angels shook their heads. Sorry, but we don't serve you we serve him. He is our leader now. Rainer said. Kalawarner nodded. Your time is up. You are the worst leader anyway. Middle said. You traitorous s. I will kill you. Kokobil said, flying at them, ignoring Issei. As Kokobil summoned a spear of light and prepared to attack, he was thrown onto the ground by Issei who had his foot. Once Kokobil connected to the ground, everyone heard the sickening crunch of the back of Kokobil's shawl caving in and breaking. It was the sound of a fatal wound if left alone Issei had dealt a blow that would incapacitate a god Issei had so much strength and power that even god would be wary of the power. Issei was serious. Issei continued his attack by pulling Kokobil up before punching right into his, breaking every single rib. Kokobil coughed up a massive amount of blood and was teetering on unconsciousness before a palm in his gut sent him flying into a tree. As Kokobil was slowly slipping into unconsciousness, he saw a strange man nearby, sitting on a chair. Finish him! Echoed through the school courtyard. It was a voice. Issei blinked but only hesitated for a second before grabbing both arms of Kokobil, standing him straight up with arms spread out like an X before shoving both arms into his body. He made Kokobil look like a T-Rex. Kokobil screamed in pain and just as he slipped into unconsciousness, Issei grabbed his mouth with both hands and ripped his jaw apart. Basically his mouth was completely open without any hinges. The juggernaut wins. Fatality. The man said again before disappearing in black smoke. Issei turned around and walked out of the courtyard, aware that Akino, Kiba and everyone watched him destroy Kokobil without even breaking a sweat. Rainer, Middleton and Calawarner were all behind, mouths agape at the power Issei had shown. They didn't even notice the fact that during the fight, Issei left footprints in the solid ground until he walked away which left none. Thirty minutes later, Issei was home and already showered and began to climb into his bed when the three fallen angels finally made it downstairs. He turned to them and smiled, before curling up in his bed. The three girls were nervous now, seeing such power coming from him. If Issei had wanted to, the three girls would have never stood a chance against him. Issei chuckled. Shocked I had so much power? He asked, turning to look at them. All three nodded silently. Don't worry so much. I won't hurt you girls or anyone unless you mess with my friends, family or my home. So rest assured I won't hurt you. 
The three girls nodded and undressed silently before climbing into bed with him. All four fell asleep quite easily. Issei is an unstoppable being of immense strength. When in motion, becomes even harder to stop. He becomes heavier with each increase in power, and his body gets harder to hurt with each increase in weight. Issei is the juggernaut. Thanks for watching this video. If you really enjoy this video, like, subscribe, and comment down below, and turn on that bell notification. Don't forget to support and follow the ex Doug Dimitomex for writing that awesome fanfic, and also make sure to comment on this story link in the description. See you in the next video. Goodbye.